Hi everybody and welcome back to Studio One with me Gregor. So a question has been coming up time and time again recently is how can you time stretch a free tempo performance, a performance that has been recorded without a click, so that you can then align it to the grid, time stretch it, make it faster or slower or even align it with different MIDI pattern and layer it this way. Well, I've shown before how you can do that with a singular free tempo track performance, like a stereo track recording, but I haven't shown you how you can do that with multi-tracks yet, and that's what we're gonna cover today. So to keep this fairly instructional, I have a free tempo performance multi-track recording here that consists just of three different tracks, the drums, the bass, and the congas, but has been recorded not really with a click, so uh, it's currently set to 90 BPM, the song, but when I hit play, you can hear that's not really aligned. Have a listen. In the beginning, it seems to work. But now you can hear it starts drifting apart. And many of you seem to deal with these kind of sessions recorded without a click and uh, are now wondering how can I align that to a fixed BPM. And that's very easy to do in Studio One. There's just a couple of things that you have to follow. The first thing we want to do is identify the track that has the most reliable tempo information. So that's either the most reliable musician of that recording of the band or the signal with the most transients. Transients are these rich uh, waveforms where you can clearly see the attack onset and you can clearly see the release. That's very easy for a tempo algorithm to read. So once we've identified that, that's what we're going to use to generate the tempo map that we can then apply to everything else. So we don't do separate tempo maps for each of the instruments. Separately, we try to find the most reliable tempo map and apply that to everything else. Because the idea is the performance was recorded together. So the tempo map of, you know, the heart of the rhythm, the drums in this case, should also match for everybody else. Otherwise, they would have been completely out of rhythm in the first place, right? So uh, we really just have to find one tempo map. And in that sense, the procedure is very similar to the one that I've already outlined in my How to Tempo Map with Melodyne 5 tutorial. Select the event that you want to tempo map. Then you can hit Command and M on a Mac or Control and M on Windows to edit this event with Melodyne to start mapping the tempo. And you can see that the song is currently set to 90 BPM. And as soon as the tempo mapping is done, or the tempo detection rather, in Melodyne, you'll see that Melodyne shows the 90 BPM right here because that's what the song is set to, but it also suggests a different number here in the brackets. That's what Melodyne thinks is closer to the original tempo. And when we then click on this arrow here, this drop down arrow to confirm, the song BPM is actually between 93 and 97 BPM because it's not a static tempo, it's a real organic multi track performance without a click. So then we just click here, confirm that this is indeed the case. And as soon as we do that, you see that here in the track inspector, the file tempo went from none to map. This means at this point, there's a tempo map embedded right here. And this is what we want to write into the event. Because once we have that tempo information, then we can stretch it to anything else that we want, even static BPM. The condition is just we need to know the original BPM before we can start time stretching, similar to how in mathematics you need to know the beginning of the equation so that the result makes any sense. Okay, so far so good, but how do we now get this tempo information that we detected onto the tempo track in Studio One so that we can embed it directly into the tempo information of the files? Well, to do this, click here to open up Studio One's global tempo track and then zoom in to find that first downbeat of your song. In my case, that's quite easy. You can hear there's a drum roll and then it starts right away. And this would actually be the first downbeat of my song. Then you need to locate your playhead cursor right in front of that first downbeat transient and hit the tabulator key on your keyboard. Make sure you have selected the actual event for that. And this will locate your playhead cursor straight at the beginning of this transient. Now you can select everything. You can also do that by hitting Command and A on a Mac or Control and A on a Windows PC. And then go to Edit and Split. I think this is Option and X on a Mac by default and Alt and X on the Windows PC. I have that assigned to Shift plus C, but that's just me. <laughs> Rhymes and it's true. Then chuck everything that's in front of this uh, downbeat away for now. Don't worry, we're gonna get that back in just a sec. 
make sure that snap to grid is enabled and then move everything of this performance back onto the bar line. So now we have made sure that the first downbeat of a song is aligning exactly with the first beat of the bar in Studio One. That's important because otherwise the click will run next to the performance sort of. Now that we've ensured that the first downbeat of a song is aligning exactly with the first beat of the bar in Studio One, we can select our tempo detected guide, if you will, the drums in this case, and drag that directly onto Studio One's global song tempo track, like so. Isn't that cool? And this is the point at which we can select everything and drag it out again to the left. And it doesn't really matter that everything before the first downbeat is not tempo mapped in this case, because this is from where we need the click anyway, the first downbeat. Before that, it's not really necessary. And yeah, now we have the tempo, the real tempo of the performance. You can see it's sometimes getting a bit faster, it's sometimes getting a bit slower, just like the rushing and dragging that you get from a real band. Notice how the tempo track is constantly adapting its value. And the click is just working along beautifully with the original performance. That's when we know the tempo track is perfect. But right now, this is more of an automation, a tempo track automation. This tempo information is not embedded yet within the files themselves. And we need to do that so that we can then ultimately remove the tempo map of Studio One's tempo track altogether and maybe enter a static BPM instead if we want. And because the tempo information is still embedded in the original files, it would work. Uh, to do that, you can go to Studio One Preferences, or you have to rather, and then go to Advanced Audio and make sure you have that tick box record tempo information to audio files ticked. What that does is the tempo track automation that you have here on the song is going to be rendered into all of the selected files. So select everything now and hit Command and B on a Mac or Control and B on Windows. That's when we render all of this directly into all of these. To confirm that it actually worked, you can just remove all the tempo notes from the tempo track and then just see if you can drag it out again from the selected files. As you can see, you totally can. From this point forward, we can remove all of the tempo information from the global track because it's already within the singular files anyway. Specify a completely new tempo, like let's say 120 BPM, fixed much faster, and then as last step, set all of these tracks to time stretch. Just select the first one, select the last one by holding down shift on your keyboard and then left click, and then set the tempo from follow to time stretch. And now you can see everything has been time stretched to the new BPM nicely because the original BPM is known. See, this was previously a performance that was heavily shifting between 90 and 96 BPM, and now we have it on firm 120 BPM. It could also be 70 BPM, much slower if we want. Of course, you shouldn't time stretch it too much, but this is how much you can do once the tempo information is known. You can just flatten the tempo entirely if you want. You can also leave the original performance in its organity and then add MIDI instruments that also rush or slow down as the band is rushing or slowing down. To achieve that, you would simply not delete the tempo information of the global track. There's so many different ways you can work with this creatively. And from that point forward, the DAW is your tempo playground. Anything is possible. Thank you for watching.